seven reasons why real estate builds wealth more consistently than other asset classes. Hey guys, I was having a discussion with a client of mine who invests in real estate, private equity, and other asset classes. And we were discussing the difference between private equity, commercial real estate, residential real estate, stocks, bonds. And she preferred certain asset classes more than others. She really believed in private equity because she invested X amount of dollars with a real estate development company. And then within a couple of years, she was getting like 70% returns or 50% returns per year or something like that. And she was saying like, ah, it's just the best investment out there. And while I agree that private equity has a place in a, a portfolio, I don't think it's the only thing. And it's, I don't think it's better or worse than real estate. And real estate has a lot of advantages that other asset classes don't. And that's why I'm shooting this video. Number one, when you're investing in real estate, most investors are investing for cash flow. And if you're in a country like USA, there's a lot of opportunities to buy positive cash flow properties. But if you're where I am in Vancouver, there are very limited opportunities for positive cash flow. But regardless, people who buy here in Vancouver, they're buying a property that will appreciate in value and almost all investors are buying to rent the property out. They are renting because they care about the cash flow. So we can go into details about numbers and how positive cash flow comes to be and negative cash flow. But the key principle is they want the rent to pay for a portion of their mortgage. If it pays for the whole mortgage, great. If it just pays for a portion of it or almost all of it. And real estate is a great investment because when they're renting out to tenants, their tenants are paying down the mortgage, not the investor themselves. And over time, rents almost always increase. I can only think of one, one or two scenarios where rent decreased. And that's related to the economic temperature of that particular city. But generally, rents almost always increase. Number two is asset appreciation. So when you're buying a property like a $400,000 apartment and it appreciates, it appreciates 10%, that's $40,000. So $400,000, $40,000, 10%. But you're saying, Gary, when I invest in private equity or these uh, private deals, I get like 40% return, 50% return a year. And that's true. But of that $400,000 property, how much is your actual investment? You are not putting $400,000 cash to buy that property. You are likely getting a mortgage. And in Vancouver, you're likely gonna be putting a 20% down payment. So you're putting maybe $80,000 down. The property went up in one year, it went up 10%. So you put an $80,000 down payment and you, appre and you made $40,000. So that's a 50% return. So who said that real estate can't have crazy returns? When you're looking at putting $400,000 cash, and you only make a $40,000 return, then it's a 10% return. But because you're putting a down payment of $80,000 and you're borrowing $320,000 from the bank, your return is actually more like 50% return. Number three, tax benefits. When you're buying a real estate investment property, it's considered a business. And if it's a considered a business, then the expenses associated with that business are likely tax deductible. They are considered business expenses. So for example, the interest on the mortgage on your real estate investment property likely is tax deductible. And the expenses where you need to service that real estate investment property, if you need to drive to the tenant and talk to the tenant, if you need to make repairs to the investment property, those are all business expenses. So those are taxable benefits when it comes to buying investment property. Likewise, if there's a loss in your business and you're getting negative cash flow or you're spending a lot of money and you're claiming a bunch of stuff that's related to your business, you can use that tax loss to offset some of your taxable income. Make sure you talk to your accountant to discuss how this applies to you based on where you live and where you're investing. 
Number four, real estate is the only asset I know where you can borrow money to invest. When's the last time you went to the bank and asked the bank to loan you a hundred grand to buy Google stock or to buy Amazon stock or to buy stocks in Apple? When's the last time you went to the bank and asked them for a loan to for you to invest in a private equity fund or to buy a mutual fund or to buy some sort of private investment deal or to invest in some private investment deal or to invest in some private venture. What other asset class do you know where you can borrow money from the bank to pay for the property, have a tenant pay off your mortgage, pay off your loan and then if there's a difference, you get to keep the difference. I don't know any other asset class like that, do you? Number five, loan pay down. Many people aren't aware that not only is the tenant paying off your mortgage, but half of that mortgage payment goes towards principal and half goes towards interest. Depending on the interest rate, but if your interest rate is pretty low, then it's about 50-50. You may be 45-55 or 55-45 or whatever, almost half. So 50% goes to interest, 50% goes to principal. So technically, that $2,000 mortgage payment, $1,000 is being deposited into the equity of the property. Basically, someone is putting $1,000 in your savings account that you can't touch because it's in the equity of the property every month. Basically, someone is building your nest egg for you. And over time, that $2,000 mortgage payment, more money will go towards principal and less money will go towards interest as you pay off the mortgage. Number six, forced equity. Real estate is an asset class where you can renovate the kitchen, the bathroom, the flooring, paint the walls, decorate it a little bit, shoot some nice pictures, and you can increase the value, increase the market value for that property. So you have control to increase the market value of your asset. That doesn't happen when you invest in stocks or bonds or certain private equity deals. You can't just say, oh, let's paint this or let's, um, let's renovate this or let's repair this and increase the market value of my investment. Number seven, inflation. When buying a real estate investment property, your mortgage, your property taxes, they're generally fixed. They're, they don't usually increase significantly over time. So as inflation goes up year after year, your property will generally increase faster than inflation. And because of inflation, rents generally go up in value. As the real estate prices go up, rents generally go up as well. And so not only does real estate keep up with inflation, almost always it appreciates faster than inflation. So with real estate, you're paying today's price, which is generally fixed for a long period of time, but you're taking advantage of the prices going up as well as the rents going up and generally much higher than the rate of inflation. There you have it, seven reasons why real estate builds wealth more consistently than other asset classes. Hope you found value and I'll see you in the next video.